Something to hold on to, gotta find it first. But here I am, cause I've been laying under palm trees, waiting for the summer, knowing there's nowhere to go. Cause I am happy on this island, wanna be my fun left. I don't ever want to leave.
Welcome to the Play versus Rocket League NMAA Championship matchup between the RRHS Rams and the La Cueva Bears. I'm the Doxology, and with me is Caribou and Caribou. What a way to start May off and with some high school championship Rocket League. I'm so excited to start this month. I mean, you can't ask for a better way to start. I mean, these players all earned their spot here fighting for a high school championship. Rio Rancho facing off against La Cueva in a best of seven series, 1200 winner take all to qualify for another tournament down the road. I mean, this is everything you could ask for day one of a championship. And honestly, what about just the bragging rights? High school, you know, getting a chance to show off some of those skills that you've made. And you know what? This whole year has kind of been a little weird. So a lot of new new skills have been brought out with a lot of really talented players. And Rocket League is just one of those games that elevates its game every single year. And so we're going to see some of that gameplay in just a second. But Caribou, talk to me a little bit about this type of caliber. I mean, you've got championship players. So some of the strategies that they're going to be utilizing, maybe, you know, stacking or anything like that. I mean, just looking at where they're at, playing in the 3v3, these guys know exactly what they need to do. And playing with each other, I mean, there's a reason they qualified for a championship game. They already know inherently the rotations they're going to have to make, who's going to have to be the one that's left at midfield to cover any transition attacks, who's going to be the one trying to monopolize any of the back boost from the other team to try to pin them back on defense apply that pressure, put the heat map on the other side, put them in the offensive zone for a majority of the time. And I think the teams that find the success doing that more often are going to be the ones that come away on top. And you think about, you know, the coaching and, and the communication that takes place. A lot of practice goes into these. Of course, you talked about the rotations and the way that they're going to look for those uh, specific boosts and, and where those go from there. Honestly, I'm really excited to see how these teams communicate and move. I mean, Rocket League is one of those games where there is no stopping ever. Well, no matter what you're doing, you're going to be seeing a lot of off-ball movement, controlling areas and zones yep. of that field. So I want to see the midfield fights and things like that and the way that these coaches are going to, you know, kind of communicate to these players and then how the players are going to communicate to each other. It's going to be really exciting to see in this championship matchup. Yeah, and being able to watch that and seeing the caliber of these players, how can they handle themselves in a pressured situation? If it's going to be a problem of we can't handle this from where we're at currently, you know, we don't have that proper reaction time to be able to get back into position where you find yourself out of rotation more often than not. I am excited to see how they do handle this, but best of the best of the best they're going to handle it and and talk about handle it as game one is underway already and you see the rams are in the uh orange and it's going to be box city mason and modulo as they're going to be making their way through and that's the la cueva bears roster right there a lot of movement you see cube awning gloomy and buzzity for the rams as a lot happens, especially right here, I feel like the first 30, 40 seconds of the match, you see a lot of movement and seeing how the teams rotate back and forth midfield. See, that goes up. The aerials are incredible at this caliber of play as there's a beautiful save by Cube, making sure that there is no movement or places that creates those open gaps. And Caribou, I mean... The way that they're, you know, just zooming by, making sure they're utilizing the boost, aerials, things like that. These are things that they practice every single day. Well, absolutely. And just watching from the first 60 seconds, I mean, you looked at how La Cueva was just attacking constantly. They had the most boost, I mean, on their side for about that whole first minute. They were in complete control of that. They were able to keep it on the other side. But the last 30 seconds or so, Rio Rancho has really had a good opportunity to bounce back. That goes off the top bar right there. Lumi trying to kind of control it and get it out of the Rams zone. You see Buzzity just kind of <laughs> taking the little dribble and you got to love to see it. But Boxity with some great movement. And you see the boost, the utilized boost. You see the double flip, the aerial, the control all the way into the zone. Not able to get it centered though. And again, they keep it in the zone until it's cleared out. Now, Caribou, these these players and, and the strategy, as you just see a demolition right there, uh, these strategies on how to basically 
center this ball in a specific spot. They work on which player likes, you know, specific zones, how they're going to hit it. And I'm so fascinated by the fact that this is a beautiful shot Ooh. off the corner. And Ooh. Buzzity, first goal for the Rams at 240. You see this little side English off the corner. That was a beautiful shot. Yeah, you just see a little bit of the defense caught a little too far forward. Modulo couldn't get back in time, could make the adjustment. It's on target enough to bounce it off the upright. But you talk about players and positions, and you're going to see good patterns evolve as to players and the positions they stick to, whether they be on the right wing or the left wing, and someone holding back at midfield. And the teams have done fairly well with that to this point. Just haven't quite yet found the opening that La Cueva's really wanted as much control as they have had in the offensive zone. They just haven't been able to get that finishing touch. As you see, Buzz it, Lumi trying to get it out of the zone. A Good great play. shot and a great save. The Bears applying as much pressure as possible, but the Rams continue to fight back. 2.05 remaining in this first game off the oh. top bar can they get it out there lumi it comes in and finishes it 202 remaining with the rams with the 20 lead in this first game again it's a best of seven yeah beautiful just little chip shot to open that one up just got past the defense tricked them out a little bit and bounced on the line just a matter of time if it's gonna cross or not and one little shove was all it took to send it across get him a 20 lead there's Mason and Boxity for the Bears. Kind of playing that midsection. Keeps it inside the attacking zone. Trying to make sure that they, you know, find ways to create open field. Uh, a lot of midfield movement right now, too. Yeah, team's just kind of fighting for possession on one side or the other. Just trying to make sure they get their boost. And you see the robbery, the back boost right there from the Rams. But... I haven't seen La Cueva manage to have a solidified possession in the offensive zone. Like, they have good pressure to keep it on that side of the field. And they've had a couple of good chances with good passes coming from in the ceiling or coming from the wing to try to get that center. But their, their shots have just been a little bit wide where they can't get those finishes that they're looking for. And that's why they find themselves currently with no goals to show for any of their attacks that they've had. Lumi playing the wall well, trying to find a way to clear that out. A great move by Buzzity as we hit the one minute remaining mark. And Buzzity now with some aerial off the wall. Mod Medulo was there for it and continues Ooh. to apply pressure. You see Buzzity is not giving up on this. And Lumi with a shot just wide left as the Rams are extremely aggressive in this first game yeah, they just find themselves in control able to capitalize on the mistakes the defense is making trying to play off the backboard here almost getting another finally they do get it pushed in lumi you saw flying in trying to get that one pushed across the line but buzz he's the one that finally does so after the attempted rebound shot right there the rams just in basically in the face of the bears and the bears just can't get themselves in that transition point where they can find that relief valve the Rams are in control. When they get the ball in the offensive zone, they are doing the thing the Bears can't and getting those shots off, getting those quality shots that eventually cross the line. The Bears have had good opportunities. They just haven't been able to capitalize. Yeah, the Rams have made sure that every single time they've got chasers and people who are able to run up and get those rebounds as we're in the seven, six, five second mark. The Rams will take game one. We'll see if they can get one extra and they don't. The <laughs> Rams take game one, three to zero. As honestly, that was just a dominant effort by them the whole entire game. And you got to love to see it the way that they controlled. Not only that, but if you look, the Bears held a lot of the boost. They were full on boost much of the game but they couldn't capitalize on those. And Caribou, what does that mean that they're going to have to go into this next game and kind of devise some sort of plan to keep down the aggressive Rams nature? I think the part of it is the fact that they kind of need to find an outlet valve. They got to find a pass, a clearance that's not just a booming clear to send it downfield to get it out of their area. They have to find something whether they want to keep it simple, little short passes between one or the other, you know, whatever works for them that they practice the best, but you have to be able to push the other team off of that boost, 
and be able to keep pace with them in the sense that you had a good amount of boost for a majority of the time. You had opportunities on the offensive zone. The Bears have almost everything they need. They're just lacking the goals. As game two is underway, you got to love to see how aggressive the Rams are and then capitalizing on that. I mean, really, they've capitalized on that and continually applied pressure, moving three people even past midfield at times to make sure that they go get those extra shots as Medulo now trying to find a way to get this. Can't quite complete it. A nice aerial movement to get it off the wall and some good dribbling. Buzzity now playing back, gets that full boost and you see him just kind of let it bounce off the back of him. No bump, no nothing. As Amazing continues to get it out. Medulo with a nice little shot, but it was off the mark. It's cleared back and Boxity making sure that he is really playing that back player to, to make sure that, you know, maybe some of the aggressiveness, they have somebody back there that doesn't have to rush or use up too much boost. Yeah, the Rams are doing a phenomenal job on the defensive side where they're just not letting the Bears get themselves into a passing lane at all. They're not letting them pick up a groove or get into a momentum or anything that's working for them. And then on the other side, just a quick one-two down the field, just a redirect on goal where everyone's already committed forward. The Rams get the first goal on over a minute in. They just have all the answers for the Bears, and the Bears can't seem to come up with anything new yet. Buzzity there. Lumi is one of those players who just continually applies pressure. You see him on offense, on defense, making sure that his off-ball movement is creating those opportunities. You saw that little redirect for that first goal. 3.30 remaining in this second game as now the Bears with a shot on goal, but a nice save by the Rams. And now they cleared out Buzzity with a little chip shot. Meets two Bears. Another one, Medulo with a beautiful save. Saves another shot on goal. I mean, the, the Rams are just pummeling the shots on goal right now. Absolutely. And and watching a double commit, credit to the Bears for being able to recover from that, put themselves back into a position where they can, and Moldulo makes that follow-up save. They're doing really well to just stop everything the Bears are trying to do. And even when they do have the opportunities on the other end, they're just finding ways around the defense of the Bears. The Bears continually control it as finally the Rams get it back into their attacking midfield. You see him, Cube is really going up for that. You see a demolition right there. Buzzity just absolutely destroys the Bear defender. And now Mason coming up trying to make a move. Good move on Medulo, but again, the Rams, they continually rotate. Uh, their rotations are beautiful. Somebody is always in that goal area. As now, Boxity almost completes a beautiful shot, but last second save. And Boxity has to just kind of retreat back and regroup. That's just exactly what the Rams have continued to do. Even with the Bears getting a phenomenal chance to shot on goal, that ball's halfway across the line. The Rams are just able to finish that rotation. Like you said, they're always in position. They're always right where they need to be. They finish the rotation make the save, and then send it the other way to start their own counterattack where they still find themselves here on the offensive front. This is a good change of pace for them because the Bears have been the ones applying a lot of the pressure for most of this game. And the more time you can spend on the other side of the field, it's a little more pressure off your back because a one-goal lead is not much. No, it, it can change in a second or less as Cube with a beautiful save. And a great shot on goal by Mason as he comes back for it. But Boxity knocks it out. And now Medulo has to find something from midfield. A little chip shot, aerial, nice Ooh, shot by Medulo. Ties it up with 1-11 remaining in this second game. And look at this control. The beautiful double. It's just, honestly, those are the type of things that impress me most about these players at a, a young age, being able to develop these type of skills and know exactly what they're going to do and exactly how they're going to execute what they practice. And Modulo handled that really well. Utilizing almost all of the boost on that first jump, only had like 12 or 14 left to be able to then get that flip and get that redirect in. But I mean, a one goal lead, even a tie game, as fast as it can change, the Rams take it right back the other way, almost immediately just win a 50 in the corner and Cube coming in from the weak side, able to put it in across the line. So that, 
tie game didn't last too long. The Rams want to make sure that they close out this series as fast as they can. 54 seconds remain in this game. The Rams lead 2-1 to one against the Bears. And there's oh, just challenge. a little chip shot. Ties it up. 47-47. Madua, you see this kind of just grab, dribble, and then that stop. He makes sure that he kind of blocks Lumi from being able to get that save. And uh, smart plays by Mason. Yeah, the car just a little bit taller, able to win that 50 on the challenge and then redirecting the car behind the ball so that even if Lumi does get a shot or a deflection off, that it's going to stay goal side for the offensive attack to follow up if, if they don't end up getting that one there. So just a really smart positioning play. And to give credit to these players, you know, as young as they are, the talent and skills that they already have, it just continues to showcase. 20 seconds remain in this game, tied 2-2. And the Bears trying to find a way to get a little bit more aggressive. And you see a demolition in the goal as now Boxity looks for it. Lumi rides up the wall, aerials it out to midfield. And Medulla with a shot oh. just wide goes for the second oh. one with three seconds oh. left. And Medulla hits that goal and is able to take the lead three to two. Yeah, Cube just over commits right there just misses the ball so a couple seconds left to go but bears with the clutch comeback beautiful shot by modulo obviously mvp of this game in the sense that you scored the last two to get the tie and the go ahead and the bears take another one so we got a series on our hand we got a series indeed you see that three goals Medulo just showing up in game two saying you know what i'm gonna put the team on my back I'm going to get the two epic saves as well as the three goals. I mean, come on, Caribou. This is what Championship Rocket League is all about. And you got to give all the credit to both sides. I mean, the Rams did very well. As soon as they got the game tied up, they immediately answered back, get the go-ahead, so they're up 2-1. But Modulo said, no, we're not going to handle that. We're not not doing that here. We're, <laughs> we're going to win this game. And as you said, coming in with all of the goals, put the backpack on, Modulo absolutely <laughs> Got the work done there. That was a great bounce back there from game number one where they seemed a little more flustered. They didn't really get to play at the pacing they wanted. Modulo really just took control of that game almost single-handedly. Had a good couple of layoffs, a couple of good assists from his teammates, but that was just pristine bounce back, even the series back up, and a best of seven now becomes a best of five. Yeah, it gets really close as we head into our third game tied 1-1 currently best of seven like you said it's now best of five as we are just about started with game number three now caribou a lot of communication happens between these aerials who goes up for it who saves boost things like that uh, i yeah. mean this has to be one of those things that you just become second nature with your teammates the synergy between who you are playing with and how you're playing with as Lumi comes through and says, no, nah, you're not going to get that redirect at all. Yeah, and watching it, I mean, you'll see, you know, someone on the wings will be carrying and you'll have someone shadowing them around the middle of the field or coming in from the weak side. They're always just going to be following their teammates and then you're going to have the third one around midfield just waiting in case there's a rebound opportunity or another shot opportunity off of a bounce off the backboard or something. So these, I mean, the cohesion between these teams is going to be very prevalent and just watching it, you know, not only just the person that is in control and in possession, but especially from a defensive perspective, you also have to watch the other players because you don't want to give up a weak side goal. Not at all as Cube continually looks for that extra. Lumi tries to get it as it goes just a little bit to the left. And now Cube coming in. Tries to get it centered up, and it is, but Medulo says, I'm going to clear it out. Buzz is already there. Buzzity's like, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to let that go too far past midfield. And now look at the aerial as Mason comes in and chips it back into the other zone. But Cube is there. Again, the Rams with the rotations. Every, yeah. There is always a player back. There is always a player back. There's always a player there and just watching. I mean, looking at the bottom of the screen, the boost is virtually in complete control from the Rams. I mean, a minor reset here is going to put them back on the defensive front, but now they're going to be able to counter back on the offensive side and try to push the Bears back onto their side of the field and put an attack together. The Rams are doing kind of reminiscent of what we saw in game number one, just controlling the boost, controlling the tempo of this game, and the Bears are simply just following around trying to catch up. 
You see them try to catch up, but Medulla with a move. shot on goal and met by two Rams and Mason now oh. making his name known saying, look, I want in on this action as well. You see a little chip shot off the redirect and that's just good awareness to drop it in to the upper left. Yeah, Cube just caught in the corner, going the other direction, couldn't get up in time. And you saw Buzzity there who was trying to take that one out and try to clear it out, but simply didn't jump up in the air for it. And because of that, missed the opportunity, lost possession of the ball and set them up for a beautiful shot on to give the Bears the lead. Bears lead 1-0 as Mason wow. again from pretty much just past midfield comes up off of a little bounce redirect it looked like it hit Buzzity and that's just a really good awareness again Mason two goals 236 remain in this third game the Bears lead I gotta call that a double commit like a, a one and a half either <laughs> way two players just kind of putting themselves out of position but this is exactly what we saw coming out of their goal where they eventually would tie it in the last game the Rams answer right back just well played off of that you saw the immediate first touch bounce it right off the wall Buzzy recognizing where that one's going to go play it out of the air that's a play you're going to see rather frequently as long as it, the bounce goes the way that you want it to go and the teams are just aware just knowing how they want to play their kickoffs that was well played by the rams as 220 remaining in this third game the bears now with just a one goal lead i honestly the more they play each other i feel like the the faster they're getting where they're recognizing where they can play you see just the beautiful aerials uh, and the control of, of the possession every single possession they're making sure that they maximize those aerial boosts you see that all the way down to zero and mason gets all the way close and almost completed it with a demolition but it was just wide Cube now Ooh. and Lumi off, off the, the top bar. bar. You see him just kind of work his way. Look at the patience controlling it from here. And then just a little flip shot. Mason couldn't quite boost up fast enough with zero boost. And now all tied up with 150 remaining in this third game. And that's just good aim. I mean, simply trying to put it out of the defender's reach and one of two players is going to take that. You have two on the attack. Lumi could play it off the cube if you want. Or Cube could just play basically as a decoy. And, well, we only have the one defender in the goal. It's going to be, a, you know, flip the coin. Which direction are you going to go? And Lumi just played it right. The Medul and Mason attacking the Rams goal, honestly. And there's Boxity coming in on it, trying to basically rotate in with some fresh boost. And now he's got to come all the way back. Lumi takes it all the way down off the crossbar oh. and Cube off the crossbar as well. As he gets so close, just right side. Boxity now clears it out. Cube basically controls possession. Didn't really push too quickly with it. But now that's a floater. And with one minute remaining in tie game, this is anybody's game. Could go either which way. And I know the Rams right now are going to be kicking themselves after that open opportunity that Cube shot wide. But going to have to try to find something in the next 45 seconds and try to get off this side of the field because... Right now, you just saw Modulo and Boxity both went from 0 to 100 on boost real quick. And now, going to try to find an answer back the other way. The Rams are in a good position. They're on the right side of the field. But there's still enough time for a counter that the Bears could put together. 30 seconds remaining. Buzzity and Lumi now trying to get it back. Cleared out. Great shot off the corner. Cube save. with a wonderful save. Comes in and possibly saves the game winner as Boxity goes for it. And Modulo now trying to... Maybe get a demolition right there. Mason going to play it off the wall. Medulo comes in and plays it off the wall, but a great knock by Cube with just a few seconds left. There's a demolition, and now we're into overtime. Oh, my, oh, my. Championship Rocket League overtime underway for game three. You see immediately the boost. Almost all of the Bears immediately had a 100% boost on, on that. I mean, honestly, that, that's cool. what you need. Yeah. I mean, especially coming out of the kickoff, like, the first 10 seconds is the most dangerous time frame in the game because nobody's got their boost. Everyone's in rotation. And the Bears putting emphasis on that, putting priority on that, and now find themselves in the offensive front just because they're moving faster than the Rams. The Rams can't keep up, but they are making a lot of really clutch saves.
You see Mason and Boxity were all the way on the attacking zone and uh, the Rams able to clear it out. You see Lumi is back. We'll see if he plays it off and he does. Lumi gets it up and then plays a little bit off the wall, but Mason comes in. Nobody's oh, no back defense. and Mason scores the goal and says, you know what? This is just how it's going to be. And there was even an opportunity on the other side where you had a offensive double commit to try to win possession out of the corner. If Lumi wins out of that, maintains possession, all of a sudden that one's maybe going the other way and you have the opportunity instead just gets a little bit too far. Mason's like, thank you very much. I'll take that. While the rest of the Rams are moving forward, thinking they're about to go on a transition attack. Well, now you've left the goal open. Mason takes possession and overtime win. Now they're up 2-1. What a way to come back to, though. That first game just being absolutely dominated by the Rams and then coming back winning game two and game three now, putting themselves in a really good position considering this is a best of seven championship. $1,200 for the team is on the line. All the bragging rights. I mean, this is championship rocket league play but mason getting that hat trick you saw medulo do it in game two and now mason coming making a name for himself and showing what he has i, I think the rams are going to have to really combat this in some way shape or form again maybe that you see them get ultra aggressive like they did that first game yeah maybe i just try to push them off of the ball push them out of the bounds try to disrupt those passing lanes because mason in that game especially we saw a lot of the setups mason is the one that's usually shadowing and following the possession of it so if you're able to stop that one and you don't want to give up those weak side goals challenge the ball a little more aggressively get in their face and don't let them play they want because the bears have done very well so far to creating opportunities the offensive side game one they didn't get the shots on goal but now they finally found the answers for game two game three now the ball is in the Rams court on how do they answer and get back game number four game four underway four minutes and 40 seconds remain as Cube oh. already saying, look, I haven't been able to really get too many shots on goal. So watch what I'm capable of. Lumi, nice opening shot. Buzzity was there as well, looking for the redirect possibly. As now Cube gets the goal and the Rams take the lead. 440 remaining in this fourth game. And that's just a, a good position. I think a good call from the team in, in realizing that Cube's in a better position. Buzzity just got to leave it be. Uh, in either way, they're fortunate that went in because on a double commit, that's going to be very dangerous in the sense you got both players in the corner that are trapped and just scrambling, trying to get back on defense now. So fortunate that ball goes in. Well shot, well aimed, and good positioning from Cube to be able to get that one in. Boxity now oh. throwing it down for the Bears. Boxity came in kind of out of nowhere. You see him all the way to the side, was able to get that little boost, turn around, and rocketed it home. And now a tie game, 4-10 remaining. Caribou, this is where I think the speed slows down as they recognize they've got plenty of time in this game. Of course, they might just turn the afterburners on and go really, really fast as you see the boost for the Rams. All of them were max for a second there. And that's kind of the point of, you know, talking about the practice strategies of these teams you know what are they comfortable at playing at at 100 miles an hour are we going full force and just not slowing down at all because sometimes when you see teams that fall into that mentality they just end up in a trap that they're reeling and they don't know how to get the ball back under control they don't know how to get their rotations back in the way that they should be and someone gets caught out and they give up a lot of silly mistakes so if they're a team that's capable of playing at that high speed, then it means if that's the answer that they need to be able to take this lead and take this series back, or at least tie it back up, then maybe that's what the Rams got to do. But for the time being, starting to slow down a little bit. You don't see as much, but the Bears are the ones on the offensive front here. And they Lumi just can't quite find it. it out, too. Red, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's been a, it's been a back and forth these last probably 60 seconds of gameplay back and forth and back and forth you see mason now with all the boost almost uses every bit of boost to get that cleared into the attacking zone but unable to capitalize on it 245 remaining in this fourth game you see Alumi and boxity really working on it as cube comes forward and just clears it out now and medulo haven't seen him too active in this game so far. He's done a lot of rotations and, and a lot of work. I 
they've got some good contact on, but as you said, there's just a lot of back and forth right now. Nobody really maintaining possession. I think when we start to see someone that actually that does maintain a possession and does set up a passing lane, set up an opportunity, whether they just leave it open for their teammate or they find an angle where they can carry it and dribble all the way downfield, I think that's gonna where we see the next goal come from because otherwise it's just back and forth. Cube had an opportunity. Uh, the, that high boost, just a little bit too high. Shot over the goal. Lumi now controlling it right in front of the goal. Buzz that he keeps it in. And that's just really good rotation, making sure that that ball does not get cleared out the way that they were looking for. Lumi with a shot on goal. And Mason sacrifices himself for it and says, you know what, I'm going to make sure that I do everything I can to stop that goal. He even takes the demolition. Mason comes back strong, too. You see them kind of work together and in, in making sure that they attack Ooh. and apply a lot of attack. Buzzity coming in on the corner, looking to center it. 115 on remaining. Side. The Rams now are the ones creating their own opportunities, playing a lot more aggressive and starting to get up in the face of the Bears. You know, a couple of demo physical. They're not really letting the Bears get any relief. And they're trying to get the defense out of the way, whether they're going to bump them off the goal line or just straight up demolition to get a numbers advantage. And for a while there, it's working to apply the pressure. They just couldn't quite get that final shot to get around that last defender on the line. See the patience by Lumi to make sure that he didn't use any boost. No boost was used as he just kind of sat there waiting to see what Mason was going to do. And now Buzzity with some aerial resets. And there's another demolition and i think we're gonna see some of those coming down as 30 seconds remain Ooh. shot on goal just wide right and mason's got to chase it down modulo is gonna come up but cube chips it back into the attacking zone you see midfield is kind of where that battle is going right now yeah just a lot and that might be an opportunity now you see the double commit in the air but they got to play now they got to play fast and that's exactly what they do realizing the defense Double commit in the air. You see Boxity and Mason both have now taken themselves completely out of this play. The demo on the goal line, it finally pays off. The Rams have been formulating this. This is what they've been aiming to do for a long time. 11 seconds to go. They finally get it and the go-ahead goal. The Rams lead 11 seconds. The Bears have to get this aerial and they have to put it on their back. Says Medulla with a oh. shot and Buzzity clears it out. Will it be able to hit ground and finish up this game? And it does. And the Rams take game four you see how amazing they played the guardian angel i mean honestly the, they're doing so well so far in the communication both teams making sure that their rotations except for that last one that you pointed out the bears with the way that they kind of over committed and uh gave them that last goal as we, we kind of look at some of the plays here and and caribou i mean both teams are doing really well as we look at some of these replays yeah, and you got to give a lot of credit to both of these teams and the and the plays that they are making. As you take, I mean, with the series tied up two to two, we had a lot of really good aggressive play from the Bears in game number one. They just couldn't finally get the goals to score. The Rams were the ones that ultimately take that one in a 3-0. But coming back, the Bears find the answers that they need. They're able to get those shots a little more precise, keep them on target to take out the next two games, game three being in overtime. The Bears figured out their game plan. They figured out the way they want to play. And just credit to the Rams and what they did in game four because it was very obvious they wanted to play more physical. They wanted to get the demos and get the bumps off the goal line. So all credit to the Rams to find their answer back the way the Bears did in games two and three. And you got to love it. You got to absolutely love it. The communication, the answering back, and now it's 2-2. I mean, you think about a, a best of seven has just turned into a best of three. I mean, the next two wins and you're going home free with $1,200 for your team. I mean, this is what we absolutely love to see. And we're just about started on game five. One more, at least, just to, just to relieve that pressure. Like this game has so much momentum riding on its shoulders that you come away with this, then you are more than set for the position. That's just a great end-to-end -end cover by Box. The defense couldn't get back in time. Like I said, the first 10 seconds dangerous because no one's got the boost they want. You see Cube and Lumi both zero and five boost between the two of them. There's no way that defense is getting back in time. And that's just a good awareness as Modulo now 
chipping it in and cube coming out of nowhere says i have to use all of my boost to get there and now you see the boost kind of the the level that you see is the rams lead it and the bears are the ones that are struggling to find it as medulla finally grabs full boost and boxity able to clear that just enough to help mason be able to get ariel and clear that out of their zone and mason actually just hit that almost toward his own goal but medulla says don't worry about it bro i got it a good opportunity on the other side where all of a sudden you just have one defender to beat if you're able to maneuver past him maybe get a chip over the top then that shot could be on target but unfortunate for the rams good for the bears a 50 goes in the other way and they're able to win out the possession take it back the other side but i mean the boost back and forth the bears did a good job to get back in time to get their back boost so that they can successfully defend that attack Lumi just kind of misses that, but Cube is there. You see the, the the stacks. They've got two playing back at most times now. They're playing very, very oh. clean as that's across the field. Cube, look at this little redirect chip shot. Uses the boost well. Look at the English. Look at the English. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't even know if that's an intended shot. Buzzity's in the area as well, because if it doesn't go on target, then Buzzity's right there to send the redirect. Cube just so happened to hit it at the perfect angle that the bar down and that falls in the net. 325 remain in this game five. Tied 2-2, two -two, best of seven. As Medulo goes on the attack, Boxity tries to keep it in the attacking zone. And Cube comes up, clears it out. But Mason says, no, no, no. We want to keep it over there. Keep it away from us. Zero boost for Mason. Has to kind of pick it up a little bit as he goes. Boxity now moving forward off the wall. Medulo, a nice little chip shot. That's going to go wide. Mason centers it back up. But Cube is right there. Uses a, a little bit of boost to, to control it. And Lumi chips it to Medulo. And Medulo, honestly, that was just really good awareness, making sure that he stayed right where he was, didn't boost too much, and uh, was able to get it cleared back out. It was a good attempt on the long side because Cube is riding the back wall, and you see on the other side, Buzzy's coming up in the middle. So they're trying to get a 1-2-3 pass play down over the top and get the defense out of the way. Dangerous here with all of the defenders out of position. They're able to rotate back in time, and fortunate that shot goes wide, but... Bears had an opportunity right there if they just move a little bit quicker. 2.15 remaining in this game. Tied 1-1. Bears, Rams. And again, this is the play versus NMAA championship matchup. Winner is best of seven for $1,200 for their team and the bragging rights to be able to go back into class on Monday and say, hey, look what we did. That ain't too bad to be able to go back to school. I'm like, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm a state champion. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, something light, something light. As Medulo says, I got something light right there, puts it into the right of the goal. You see this little chip shot? That is just control. The boost and control. Lumi cannot get to it. And the Bears take the lead 2-1 with 146 remaining. And that's good by Boxity on the back end. You know, something you didn't see in, in the sense of getting the defenders out of the way and disrupting Buzzity, unfortunately, just doesn't get in the air to challenge the 50, loses out on it. Boxity's able to bump the defense out, open up that window, and give that Bears the chance to get the shot on, take the lead. Medulo Ooh. now again with okay. the kill. And that's a beautiful shot. Look at him. He picks up the boost, comes all the way back down the rotation and making sure that he's there. The speed used as well. That boost, Lumi can't get to it. Just rocket that one straight across the line. The defense, a little slow on the rotation to get back in front. Medulo recognizing the positioning of everyone and Medulo's positioning himself, being able to then just pedal to the floor, full send, upper 90. Mason absolutely demolishing through. And now Medulo, he says, I want some more. I want some more. So far, Chip. both of these players or both of these teams are communicating and their players are moving extremely fast and extremely well. All the rotations have been on point. You see them 
uh, really going exactly where they're asking each other to go. You see some of them go wide, the rotation to, to mid right here. Mason just can't get oh. to it, but Fox and he finds a way, says, don't worry, don't worry, bro. I lobbed that in. Look at this shot. A cube just unfortunately caught all four wheels on the ground. There's no recovering from that, and you don't even need your teammate, the plus one, to be able to get the nose on to redirect it in. Just enough of a little blooper over the top. As a 4-1 here, Bears in complete control now. They're picking up momentum to put them towards a Game 3 victory. This is everything the Bears could ask for to build this up, to have the confidence to go into the next game on series point. They are primed and ready for a championship. 5-1 Bears lead, 35 seconds. And, and really what we saw right there was quick gameplay and rebounding making sure they were there for that bounce back and uh the put back as well 30 seconds remain and now oh. box city going for another one almost had it used a lot of boots but wasn't able to complete Madulo into the corner and he kind of is gonna back up and get full boost and now you see the boost on the bears is hanging really well Majulo oh. with a beautiful shot just kind of using the hang time of the boost. This is gorgeous. An assist by Boxity. A little flip kick. Buzzity can't get to it. And right there, the Bears take a 6-1 lead with 11 seconds. Almost guaranteeing them the victory of Game 5. And now, Caribou, if you're the Rams, what do you do to respond to this as another shot on goal? And the La Cueva Bears take game five. Right now, the answer is to stop the player in the middle right there. Modulo. Yeah. Six shots, four goals. Was doing it all. Getting the flip resets off the ceiling. Able to get the redirects in that last shot. I mean, the aerial control. Just the understanding where that ball is going to go. The angle you have to hit it. Modulo is just putting on a clinic out there. So step number one, if I'm the Rams, Stop Medulo <laughs> at all costs. At Just all costs. Medulo off the ball. I mean, he he is utilizing his teammates as well, uh, recognizing where they're rotating to and the off ball movement. You see him come through with the little chip shots, the redirects, and things like that. And honestly, all of the Bears are playing very, very well. He, Mason had that moment where he almost got in the way of a goal, but instead didn't hit the extra boost or anything. And that kind of just lobbed right in. And that's really some of the things that you probably don't necessarily practice you know hey don't hit this normally you're looking for those redirects and things like that as we're underway with game six the bears one game away from being the nmaa champions and i'm sure they are feeling all of the excitement for it as they get into game 1200 dollars on the line here the state championship as well i mean the Bears in complete control. They have all the momentum, especially after such a commanding victory in the last one. This is their time to shine. They just got to keep playing their game, and the Rams got to find a way to get an answer because, as you said, I mean, just the way all three of these players are playing together, they just look so good. It's not all just Medulo getting all the work. He's getting all the credit for the goals, but you see Mason with the layups, with the setups and the assists. Boxity just bumping the defenders out of the way. This is a full three-man unit that is working so well together right now 425 remaining in this sixth game and the rams trying to find a way to push it to game seven as boxity plays it off the wall and buzzity comes forward trying to clear it out mason comes up he uh, uses a lot of boost to get up high and now boxity just happens to get that boost and Madulo. That's who you're talking about. Do not let him get the ball. If you're the Rams, do not let him get the ball. And it's not even the sense of just don't let him get possession of it. Like just if you see Medulo's anywhere in position where a pass could be coming Medulo's way, just bump him, push him out of the way, just demo. I mean, you have to play more aggressive. Just don't let there be any inkling of an opportunity for Medulo to get a shot off. Mason clears it out for the Bears and Buzzity trying to keep it in. 333 remaining in this game six. Medulo chips it back up on the wall. But Buzzity says, No, I want it on the wall. I want it going back. And uh Lumi now with a shot Ooh, top side. Medulo, beautiful save. Possibly was gonna go high anyway, but 
honestly they're they're neck and neck on this one going back and forth cube and lumi working their way trying to get it cleared out and medulla again playing it off the wall keeping it in the attacking zone as boxity makes a move and medulla off the ceiling as lumi comes in with a little bit of a save not sure if that shot was on goal mason with a shot on goal and that's saved by cube lumi comes through boxity with a shot just high and medulo just wide you see the bears are so aggressive as medulo finally comes in pushes it in and takes the lead one to zero in game six they are just a few minutes away from being the nmaa champions Oh my and they're playing gosh. so patient. Like, there's no pressure on their shoulders at all. They're like, yeah, we recognize we're about to be champions. And they recognize the opportunity that they have. They're not over forcing anything. They're not over committing. They're not trying to put square peg in a round hole. The Bears are just playing efficient Rocket League, taking opportunities, winning their 50s, and finding creases in the defense to continuously get shots on. And the Rams just back against the wall cannot get out of this defensive zone you see buzzity was just stuck in goal there had to make two really epic saves and again oh. i mean medulo's putting on just a clinic right now look at this redirect from boxity off the ceiling medulo coming up with a beautiful aerial shot just rockets it past past buzzity i mean there's not much that you can do in that situation and cube's just trying to come off the wall in the corner as well but they just they simply are slow on the challenge. I mean, Cube was late in the air to try to get a 50 against Medulo, and Buzzy just couldn't get up fast enough to be able to stop that one. Medulo, again, aiming the ball very well, is completely on track with what you want to do. And now you start to see some lapses on the Rams' defense. You get double commits trying to get the ball out just because the nerves seem to start to get to them where they recognize the situation they're in and they're starting to play flustered. Yeah, a little bit of panic from the Rams with 140 remaining in this game six. The Rams trail by two. They've got to find a way to at least tie it up and force it into overtime to see if they can take this game to push it to game seven as Buzzity on Chance. the attack tries to chip it forward and Lumi comes oh. forward, but not able to get it in the goal cube. Looks for the redirect. Boxity comes out of nowhere and clears it for the Bears. Buzzity now trying to play it off the wall, get it centered for Cube or Lumi. And Medulo says, no, not today. Sorry, not, not today. Boxity with a little chip shot over. And again, they're going back and forth. You see Mason playing back again, just like you said, Caribou. They're playing very smart. Mason comes forward, gets the demolition. One minute remaining. And honestly, the Bears can taste this. They can taste it. They're right on the edge of glory, on the edge of a championship. Their offense playing really well. The best defense is a good offense, and that's kind of the approach the Bears have taken to this point where they're just not letting anything develop on the other side. Full commitment from the Rams. Now there's nobody back on this half. The Bears in control. They, The Rams have pulled the keeper. This is it. They have to put it all on the line here. Under 30 seconds to go. Boxy with a shot on goal. Buzzy comes out of nowhere. That was a great save. Trying to keep his team in it. Medulo with a little bit of an aerial flourish looking to finish out this game as we're 10 seconds away from the La Cueva Bears being the play versus Rocket League NMAA champions as we count down last second. And there you have it. The La Cueva Bears are your play versus Rocket League NMAA champions. And caribou this is exactly the type of thing you want to start the month of may off with is that type of rocket league especially going into the the end of the school year right you're like okay we're going out on top <laughs> in a very flashy fashion i mean medulo out there just scoring left and right front and center put on a clinic out there it was the all offense medulo show here the teammates did a phenomenal job mason being able to set up a lot of the passes boxity getting a lot of the defenders out of the way when they had to play physical but that game five performance of putting six shots on and scoring four from medulo and they scored six goals with a five goal win i mean that was the one that set the tone set the pace that lc was going to move on and take this 
championship. I mean, home. and you look at how they started too. Just game one, the Rams came out so aggressive, just shot after shot after shot on goal. And, and you saw Medulo just show up. We look at some of these replays here and the communication. You see really good communication between the two teams. Lumi with the goal, Buzzy now coming through. You see almost that little hesitation as Cube snuck that one in. Medulo though, a nice shot. Lumi couldn't get up on that one to make the block. Medulo, this is one of my favorites, the chip shot through. I mean, he just rocketed that into the upper left and you gotta love it. Mason showing off some skills by not full boosting and allowing his teammate to get the goal. And again, Medulo was on the board left and right all day long. And just the patience that they were playing with, that they don't even have to wreck this. I mean, especially this possession alone, where between Foxy and Medulo, all they're doing is just small little circles. Just pick up a little small boost pad and then wait and then get another opportunity, another chance, another shot on. And they played a slow and methodical game to eventually walk away with that victory and then ultimately walk away with the championship. On the other side, Rio Rancho had a great game plan bounce back in game number four where they're yes. down 2-1. They even it back up 2-2. They get a little more physical. They bump the offense off. They find a way to just outscore. It's a low-scoring game. It's a 2-1 final. But what they did there was what they needed to. Game five... I mean, the Bears recognized, and they're like, okay, we're, the, we're going to turn The Bears kind of took control in game five, and I, I you could kind of feel it going into game six. Is they, they knew they wanted to apply that pressure quickly, and they did exactly that. But Medulo, I mean, you talk about somebody who is aggressive and talented and capable of controlling and communicating with teammates exactly what needs to happen. Because you saw him kind of take point, and you saw the way that the movement allowed him to open up those shots, and then also just the knowledge and the wherewithal of being able to say you know what i need to make sure that i pick up this extra boost i'm going to boost forward and i'm going to get this chip shot or i'm going to rocket this like that one goal we saw he rocketed it straight up or yeah. left past Lumi, and that is exactly what you love to see and that's what takes the la cueva bears to this champion and it qualifies them for a, a future tournament as well so i mean they're not done yet they get to go back and they get to relish in this victory but they get to kind of say, hey, you know what? We got some more things on the horizon, so. And the best part about it is being on the horizon, they're, this is day one, right? So, like, they get to scout out the rest of the competition. Now they just get to sit back, relax, practice, understand what they need to work on here from this series. And down the road here later on this summer when they're going to compete again, they're going to know what all the competition is going to bring to the table. And honestly, congrats to both teams in the wonderful Rocket League that we were able to see as we get ready to wrap things up. I mean, honestly, this is the type of stuff that gets you fired up and excited for more Rocket League. And I cannot wait as the Rocket League season really is all over the place. And we get to see talented, talented players in the future. And uh, honestly, if it's anything like this, I'm excited to see Medulo's name again later on. Uh, from everybody here, Play Versus, I'm the Doxology and Caribou. We're going to be signing off. And thank you and stay tuned for more next time.